Welcome back everyone, this is part 2 of how to use Journeyman's Minimap. This video focuses on the Fog of War system. I'll show you how to add Fog to your level, how to customize the appearance of Fog, then how to configure actors that reveal Fog, and how to create actors that respond to Fog. Throughout the video I'll also give some comments on how to use the system in a multiplayer game. So to start I created a new level which is just a simple floor. Now I'm going to do some basic setup for this level. So I'm going to drag a map background actor into the world. And position it so that it covers the playable area. And now that area will have a background texture. I'm also going to add the minimap to the screen again. So in the last video we created a master widget that contains the minimap widget. Well, I'm going to create that master widget and add it to the viewport. Uh, to viewports. Now when I play we have a minimap and the minimap will have a background texture. Now let's add fog to this level. To do that, again in the place actors window search for map fog, drag that into the level and just like the map background actor this is a, this is a box volume that adds fog to that area. So I'm going to position this over the playable area and you can place one of these or multiple if you want. And if I jump back in game, you'll see that the world is a bit darker. That's to represent that that part is covered in fog. And the minimap is also a bit darker. Now this world uh, effect of fog can be disabled if you want to do your own graphics. In that case, select the map fog actor and disable the, or uncheck the enable world fog uh, boolean. Now the world rendering is unaffected. But for now I'm going to enable this effect so that we can see which parts of the world are in fog. We can also tweak the opacity of the fog, like make it completely black when uh, areas are covered. So to do this, for the world there is a, a property on the map fog actor called world opacity hidden, and the opacity refers to how much of the world is visible. So if I turn, if I turn this to zero, then areas covered in fog are completely invisible. And you'll see it's completely black. Now that's really ugly, so I'm going to set it back to 0 0.5 again. Like that. And in a minimap, I can do the same. So scroll up, and there's a value called minimap opacity hidden. So if I want the minimap to look black if it's covered in fog, I'll set this to 0. So hidden areas are like have 0 opacity. And now our entire minimap is black because it is covered in fog. Now let's make our actor reveal the area around it. To do this, uh, we have to add a component to this actor class. This can be done in, in C++, but it can also be done in Blueprint. So I'm going to open the Blueprint class for this character. And in the third person example, that's in this folder, third person BP, blueprints, and the blueprints called third person character. And we add a map revealer component. This component will clear fog. If you go to the viewport, then you'll see that the component is a rectangular shape, just like the map, map uh, view component. You can rescale this, sh this shape, like make it um, larger or smaller, or you can set the box extent on it and the area that it covers will be revealed in the minimap. So let's make this a bit bigger. And now when I jump back into the game, you'll see that the area around the character is being revealed. By default, it's a circular shape that's being revealed. You can also set this to rectangular. In that case, select the map revealer component again and set the reveal material to uh, M revealer rect. The reason why this is a material is because this shape is being, like the, the part of, of the world that is uncovered is stored in a render target, in a texture. So if I set this to rect, then it's a rectangular area around this character being revealed. Now this looks a bit uh, uncommon for games, but this rectangular shape is more um, is intended for like if you want to script your level. 
For example, if the character stands on the switch and then a certain room is revealed. Now for this character, I'm going to set it back to circular again. Right now, as you move around, the area behind you becomes covered in fog again. So fog revealing is only uh, temporary. What if we want an area to re remain revealed after we've visited it? So this is more like for exploration type games or for RTSs where you can, uh, for RTSs where you can uncover a map slowly. To do that, go to the map revealer component and set the reveal mode to permanent. Now every area that has been explored remains explored and you see that I'm leaving behind this path of explored area. The setting can also be set to off and can be changed during gameplay and the main use case for that is for team-based games and for multiplayer games. Because right now we have added the, a map reveal component to our character. Now in a team-based game or in a multiplayer game we could have like multiple of these characters walking around and they could be assigned to different teams. But we only want the player to be able to see what their team members see. In that case, what you can do is set the reveal mode to off to begin with, and then after resolving this character's team ID, we can change the reveal mode to on or off based on whether this character is in the local player's team or not. So if I'm playing Team Red, then only other characters that are Team Red should reveal for me. So I can set the reveal mode uh, during gameplay, for example, after resolving the team ID. And that's how you create actors that reveal the area around them. Just add a map revealer component to the actor class. If you're creating a MOBA, that actor class can also be uh, a vision ward. If you're creating RTS, then it can also be like a scouting tower. Or if you're scripting a level, you can also spawn actors that reveal a room. Now let's make some actors that respond to the fog. So they, for example, let's make a building that is hidden initially and becomes visible once you get close enough. I'll create a actor blueprint called BP Building. Give it a simple graphic a cube here. Change the proportions a bit so now it's a building. And I'm going to hide this actor as long as the area is in fog. So I want to request what the current fog state is uh, at that location. To do that, I'm going to get a reference to the fog uh, actor, the map fog actor. And I'll do this once at begin play so that we don't have to do it every frame. So search for the map fog actor. Iterate over the results, but it will most likely only, only contain one result. And that one result I'm going to save to a variable. with a reference to that fog actor, so that's going to be uh, this fog actor here that's placed in the level. I can ask it, what's the fog value at a certain location? By calling get fog at location. And you need to plug in a world location. So for this, I'll just use the actor location. This function will ret return a value between zero and one, which is the reveal factor. <clears throat> Zero represents that the, act, that the location is hidden in fog. And one means that it will be, it's revealed. So I'm just going to check, is it larger than zero? If so, then it's revealed. And then based on that, hide or unhide the actor. I'm doing this in tick right now just to keep, keep the tutorial short, but you can move this logic to different places and uh, consider calling it less regularly. Okay, so if it's if reveal factor is larger than zero, it means uh, it is being revealed, then we unhide the actor, like we set hidden to false. Otherwise, we set it to true. And that should be it. So let's place some buildings into the world.
Uh, let's see, our player start is facing this direction, so place him in front of the player, and let's see, let's see what happens. So I play, I see no buildings, but when I get closer, the buildings pop up. Like once the world location of the building, which is the origin, the, the center of this building, once that becomes revealed, then the building pops up and stays visible as I walk away. Now these buildings, they are visible as long as that area has been explored. You could have a game, you could have dynamic actors, like actors that are moving around, that you don't want this behavior for. For example, if, the, these, um, if there are enemy units, that should only be visible if I'm currently close to that unit. I'll show you how to do, how to do that. So I'll just copy this blueprint right now, call it BP units, and change the graphic to like, from a cube to a character mesh, just to represent that this is a unit. Now the logic is still copied here, so we resolved our map fog, uh, map, fog, <coughs> map fog actor, excuse me, and we check the location location's uh, reveal factor. Now if you check this option here, requir require currently revealing, then it reveal that then it returns the reveal factor, but does not include like past revealing. It only includes current revealing. So the reveal factor will be larger than zero only if there is a map reveal component currently nearby that reveals that area. Let's plant a couple of these into the map and see what happens. I get close, the character becomes visible, I walk away a bit again, and it hides again. So this is more um, intended for uh, dynamic actors, especially for for uh, enemy actors. Now this is a minimap plugin, and we have minimap icons. So how do you configure how those icons interact with Fog? Let's add a icon to this unit here by adding a map icon component to it. I'll set it to an arrow. And what you'll see is that by default, icons are always visible. You may not want that, especially if you're not supposed to know a actor's location if it's in fog. What you can do then is go to the icon component, scroll down to the minimap environment interaction category of, of uh, properties. And the setting to, to play with is icon fog interaction. There's a couple of settings. You can make the icon always render above fog. That means that it's always visible. And also fully visible. You can set it to render to always render under fog, which means that the fog overlay is drawn over it. So right now, since the fog is transparent, we can still see the icon. But if you like your fog to be completely opaque, so I'll set the, if the area is hidden, then the minimap opacity should be zero. In that case, you have a kind of natural occlusion of the icons. So I can't see the icons because they are, they are like truly beneath the, the fog visual. But if you have transparent fog, we may have to, and you want the icon to be hidden while the area is in fog, you can explicitly hide the icon uh, when, when that's the case. To do that, set this icon fog interaction to only render when revealing. Now only when we are currently revealing that location, then the icon is also visible. Walk away again, the icon becomes invisible. And the final option, only render when explored. This behaves like the building, where if you've uh, visited the location once, then the icon remains visible at that location. And then finally, some technical remarks in case you want to 
do your own fog rendering in the world. The state of the fog is saved in a dynamic render target that's created on startup by the map fog actor. So the shape of this explored area, as well as the shape of the area that's currently being, uh, being revealed by the player and other actors, is stored in one render target uh, in the red and green channels. The resolution of the render, render target can be set on the map fog actor via fog uh, render target size. And a reference to the render target can be retrieved by first getting a reference to the fog actor and then calling get source render target. So this is a 2D texture and the information in, the, in that texture represents the box volume of the map fog actor. Also, if you want to store the current uh, revealed state, like or the explored area, and load it later, this can be done by reading from this render target and writing to this render target again. Um, this functionality is not included with the plugin, but hopefully with this information, this, this puts you on the right track. If you have any more questions about fog uh, please join our discord the link will be in the description and i hope this video was very helpful in setting up fog in your game the next video will be about more advanced use cases of map background actors so what if you have a game with procedural level generation how do you assign or generate textures for that what if you have a game with uh, or you have a building with multiple floors how do you make the Minimap change uh, background texture based on the floor you're on. Uh, these will be the topics that will be in the next video. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.